Hi, window watchers. You know what this is sitting up here on, on the top in front of me? Look. It's a piece of soap. And it's carved. It's been carved into the form of a fish. That's what we're going to talk about today, soap carving. And you know, if your mother keeps an extra store of soap in hand, why don't you run and get a newspaper and, and a paring knife from the kitchen and a pencil and a piece of paper and a bar of soap right now. Perhaps you can carve soap right along with me. It'd be lots of fun because carving soap in itself is a lot of fun. And that's what we're going to be talking about today is carving soap and, and how to go about it and where to start and what you should finish up with. So, where to start? Well, I guess where you'd have to start would be with the bar of soap, wouldn't it? And there are some soaps that are better than other soaps. A very, very soft soap is really what you want. And by, well, a really soft bar of soap, you can even squeeze just a little bit through the wrapper and your thumbs and your forefinger will really sink into the soap just a little tiny bit. Then, the uh, next thing to look for is the size of your soap soft soap, and if it's the first time at carving, you'll probably be a lot better off in getting a large bar of soap. But you can use the small ones, too. It's just depending on what, uh, what it is that you're going to carve. Then spread a newspaper down and get a piece of scratch paper. And on this scratch paper, or any kind of paper, tablet paper, take a pencil and draw around your bar of soap. Sometimes soap comes in different colors, and then you could have a colored piece of carving, too. Now, remember that when you draw around your soap, the, um, the outline of the soap here is going to be just a little bit larger than the soap itself. And then you want to put your drawing... right inside the square of soap. And I'm going to make approximately the same drawing as I did when I carved that first piece of soap so that you perhaps will be able to see a little bit better the different steps that were used in carving that first piece of soap that we looked at today. Now, when you have your pattern drawn, and you see the bigger the better and the simpler the better, cut out the pattern. Not just around the uh, lines that you drew around the soap, but around the pattern itself. Now, my fish is going to be on a base. The base is running along the, the bottom. Uh, you must remember to keep a fairly large base on whatever it is that you are carving so that it will have a little more body to it, especially at the bottom where it will be standing. And then we'll cut around here. And then with the with a pencil or with a, a blunt instrument, end of a pen, that's what I'm going to use. We'll take our pattern and we'll trace it on the soap here. There. And I'm going to use the blunt end of a pen. Here's the point down here and I'm using the other end to go around the pattern the outside and also on the lines here on the inside because we'll be able to press through the pattern into the soap. You want to be very sure that with one hand you're holding the pattern of the soap down, or the pattern, here in this case of the fish, down on the soap so that it won't be slipping around. Here, around there, and that should do it. Now, very lightly, we can see this pattern we have drawn. So if we take, this is an orange stick that I'm, I'm using. We'll 
little etch over the outline of the pattern so that this way we can see a little bit better just exactly where we're going to do our carving. Then we're not through yet. We have still something else to do. Here's the eye there. You can see then the pattern of the fish. Right here in the front, there's the lower lip and the upper lip right in the center. And I'm going to draw these lines as straight as I can across the front edge of the soap here. And then using my pattern, only this time turning it over in the way it was before, placing the center of the lips exactly in the same spot there. I'm going to do this tracing and I'll do it exactly like we did it on the other side. Only I think this time in order to work a little bit faster so that we can finish carving a little bit more of this fish, I'll just use the orange stick and see if we can kind of speed things up a little bit here. Now we have to use the pen though and go through the pattern again and mark on the soap. Sometimes there is a ridge on your soap or sometimes there is letters on the soap telling you the name of the soap and if that is the case then it's a good thing I think to take the knife and scrape off most of those ridges or most of the letters before you start carving because they're going to come off sooner or later anyway. Now then, let's start, shall we? Where to start? We want to start in a corner, in the biggest empty corner that we can find. And it seems to be on this piece right up here. And if you notice, I'm not trying to cut in the first cut that I make right down here at the forehead what I suppose would be the forehead of the fish. I started way up in the corner and I'm taking off just a, a little pieces at a time. That's so that I won't crack a great big chunk off of the soap. And another thing you notice, I'm pulling my knife right straight across like that instead of just taking off the edge pieces. I'm going right straight across. You want to be careful in using the paring knife too, so that you don't cut yourself. And then after we get fairly close, to the line that we made with the orange stick, we can start a carving motion with our knife, still keeping it flat across the edge of the soap. Then every once in a while we we'll want to stop and check the other side to see whether or not we're following exactly along in the same place where we made our uh, indentations with the orange stick. Let's continue on over here now and take out this small piece up here where the fin indents a little bit. And the next one gets shorter. And I think we can take off quite a bit back here now. But still, not too much at one time. The slower the better. You're not in any hurry to finish. And especially be careful when you turn the knife like this so that this back piece here where the pressure of the knife is applied doesn't just snap right off for you. I think we're going to have to hurry here in order to even get the outline of this old fish carved out. How are we coming along there in the front? I'm kind of having a hard time seeing. Sometimes if you lay the piece of soap down on its broad side here and cut right straight down, it will help keep the edges a little bit more even, and perhaps it will work a little bit faster too. Oh, let's 
take this piece out here like that and let's turn it all the way around twist your soap around so that you can take the pieces off of it very easily and you can turn it in any way that you that you want to in order to make it a little bit easier for you, for yourself there now I think we couple more little pieces here. I just about got the fish carved in an outline. And there is the outline of the fish. Still on the base, of course. But the other thing is, we want to make it into a three-dimensional object. So that the fish, when he looks round, he still looks like a flat fish. He looks like a fish from the side just because the outline is there. But look, if you look at him from the front, looks just like a bar of soap. So what we want to do now is to round off the corners of our fish. Only we have to be careful. We can leave his mouth sticking right out there. We can work on it a little bit later or we can trim some of it off right now too. But using the point of the knife, and drawing back on it, like this, let's take off some of the fin up here because the fin is, is really in the center of the fish's back, isn't it? And we can really trim the fish down. We're just working on one side at a time now, but we're not forgetting this other side anyway. taking it rounder and rounder. And some of the pieces, now on the mouth on this fish, looks terribly large sticking out there, doesn't it? But by the time we finish working with the mouth of the fish, by the time we get that far and we whittle it down to be in the very center of the fish, as it should be, instead of way out around the corners of all the edges, by the time we get that far, Get it all whittled down, it won't look oversized at all. It's better to have something too big and be able to cut it down than it is to cut off too much and then have it be too small at the very end. But now you see I'm cutting in towards the tail of the fish right here because the fish is smaller. The tail, and he's beginning to take on a rounder shape now. And that's what we will continue doing until this side is finished and then we will work on the other side so that when we are finally through our fish will really look like a fish on all sides on both sides from the back and from the front and when you finish carving the big pieces take your knife and just rub it back and forth and smooth it off a little bit and then you can take your finger and very lightly rub the fish and give it a satiny finish. Try some soap carving, will you? It's lots and lots of fun. Bye.